good morning students uh, this is lecture 36 under module 12 and uh, this is the last lecture of our uh, course uh, membrane technology uh, in today's lecture uh, we'll cover perstraction membrane chromatography and uh, little uh, brief uh, description about control drug delivery which is uh, using membranes of course which is uh, gaining a lot of importance nowadays in the field of medicine so uh, let us understand actually what is perstraction so uh, perstraction is something uh, like liquid liquid extraction so it's a membrane based extraction process in which two solid phases are in contacted uh, using a membrane uh, so, the membrane permeation and extraction phenomena occur by contacting the downstream with an extracting solvent. So, basically in the permeate side little close to pervaporation you can imagine in that sense, but in a pervaporation uh, the downstream part is vacuumized uh, so as to maintain a lower uh, vapor pressure or partial pressure. So, here in this case uh, we are in the downstream side you are using an extracting solvent. Uh, so, the desired species selectively crosses the membrane and extracted by an extracting solution. Uh, so, uh, perstraction actually was uh, developed or conceptualized long back uh, as an alternative to, uh, to liquid liquid extraction because liquid liquid extraction uh, in which uh, we use an extracting solvent uh, sometimes creates some toxicity problem as well as forms emulsion with certain other types of solvents. So, to overcome these things perstraction um, technology was conceived and developed. So, in this case the membrane allow the selection of a wide variety of extractants. So, here since the extractant and uh, the phase th from which extraction is being happening uh, do not come in direct contact with each other e as in the case of liquid liquid extraction. So, he, so therefore, uh, they are being separated by membrane therefore, we can use a varieties of extractants and uh, those can include also miscible solutions for a typical example is recovery of ammonia from wastewater using sulfuric acid. Uh, so, perstraction technique eliminates the problem of phase dispersion and separation altogether. So, this is a very good technique, but as you know every technique has its some advantages and disadvantages right. So, um, uh, this technique also has certain uh, limitations we will we'll discuss later. So, let us see uh, one of the application which is very classic application for uh, perstraction is separation of butanol acid and ethanol from aqueous solution by ionic liquid. So, this is a work that is uh, being taken from one of the reference. So, you know ABE fermentation which is called acetone, butanol and ethanol fermentation. It is a uh, strictly anaerobic process in which uh, the anaerobes uh, will uh, degrade the substrate to various uh, components. So, butanol, acetone, ethanol or are simultaneously formed, but uh, uh, their ratio will be of course, different. So, um, uh, many times what happens you are eyeing for a butanol production uh, which is a very high grade liquid fuel. So, uh, butanol uh, beyond certain percentage in the fermentation broth uh, prove to be toxic to the microorganisms. Um, so, what uh, the need is to remove butanol as it is being produced. So, here uh, in this case uh, perstraction uh, also plays a very important role, but in this case what we are uh, di discussing today here ionic liquids are being used uh, we have discussed little bit in ionic liquid in some of our class exactly I do not remember which one. Uh, ionic liquids are a class uh, of green solvent in which there is a cation and there is an anion they are free they are fused together to form a ionic liquid. So, basically the important class are RTILs which are called room temperature ionic liquids that means at room temperature they are liquids otherwise they are basically salts. So, uh, here four different ionic liquids were used uh, by using commercial hydrophobic ionic liquids and the membrane is a PDMS membrane. So, the module is made up of uh, polymethyl methacrylate, uh, it was used to replace the flat sheet membrane. The combined effect of organophilic character of both membrane and ionic liquid enables an efficient mass transport process with high permeability and selectivity. So, this is the schematic of uh, the perstraction uh, setup which is used to uh, remove uh, this butanol, acetone and ethanol from aqueous solution using ionic liquids. Excellent results were uh, found actually. 
reported. So, another application is partial dealcoholization of red wine by RO and eva uh, evaporative perstruction uh, mechanism. So, you know um, uh, there is a huge demand of uh, uh, less alcohol uh, beer or alcohol free beer especially in European markets. Uh, so, um, reverse osmosis combined with evaporative perstruction is a common technique for dealcoholization. So, you know we have discussed uh, this uh, uh, dealcoholization um, of beer during our uh, uh, discussion on RO. So, here RO is combined with evaporative perstruction. So, you can see this is the schematic representation actually. So, from the wine tank wine is being pumped out to the membrane system which is a RO membrane here. Okay. Then uh, the molecular weight cut up is around 200 to 220. Then the concentrated wine which is being collected. Uh, at the retained rate because the RO membrane is selectively passing only ethanol and water. Okay. So, the concentrated wine is being recycled back okay, uh, to the wine tank and the ethanol and water are being uh, which is being uh, this one collected from the permeate side are uh, being treated to a perstruction membrane where ethanol uh, is being collected uh, in a purified uh, manner and the water is being circulated. So, evaporative perstruction membranes used for this process are hydrophobic in nature as they permit the flux of ethanol vapor from wine and retain the bulk liquid. So, the rate of ethanol removal depends on the membrane surface area, feed flow rate, uh, the stripping solution flow rate and the temperature. It is a clean technology and do not produce any waste material beside water and ethanol. Ethanol produced during this process can be recovered and reused. So, uh, there are few other applications of perstruction also. Uh, amino acid separation through charged membrane, removal of pollutants from ground water, removal of pharmaceuticals from waste water. Uh, um, but uh, again as, a, as I was talking about disadvantages, so you know uh, the membrane cost also plays a very big role here and uh, fouling uh, needs to be taken care of. So, which is very inherent to any uh, such membrane processes. So, apart from that this is a good technology which has uh, established its footprint in even commercial scale. In today's lecture the next topic is membrane chromatography. So, you can uh, imagine if you know about chromatographic separation. So, you can imagine that a membrane is doing the chromatographic separation. So, it is exactly what the membrane does here. So, it is extremely popular in bioprocessing industry where it was conceived and developed to overcome the mass transfer limitations associated with conventional resin based chromatography. So, especially uh, for the purification of uh, protein products as well as antibodies. So, uh, it is an integrative technology for protein purification. The main feature for this process is the absence of pore diffusion. So, here there is no pore diffusion here. It uses microporous or macroporous membranes that contain functional ligands attached to their inner pore surface as adsorbents. So, the absence of pore diffusion greatly reduces the transport resistance. Now, um, uh, as you know, uh, one of the most important uh, features in this bioprocessing industry is the protein purification and uh, anywhere we are going to use uh, protein whether it is a therapeutic uh, product or any such even even uh, as a uh, food substitute also then you can understand that the type of purity that we need uh, that we need basically is almost 99.99 percent. Okay. So, as you know um, uh, no other separation method will give me high purity as chromatographic separation whether it is adsorption, distillation, absorption, liquid liquid extraction just you name it any any separation technique nothing will give so high purity than that of chromatographic separation. However, the problem with chromatographic separation is its cost. So, chromatographic separation is basically your uh, packed bed separations where uh, uh, separation is happening due to adsorption, uh, distribution coefficient plays a very important role apart from other parameters that affect that. So, uh, to reduce the uh, chromatographic cost there are new techniques have been adapted and uh, uh, membrane chromatography uh, aims to do so which will try to address two things first is this mass transfer limitations okay uh, which are actually associated with this uh, chromatographic separation where uh, it is the packed bed basically the ligands are there okay these are ligands which are packed inside the bed so, they are porous in uh, nature to avoid pore diffusion and their mass transfer limitations membrane has been conceived and of course, price is also a factor. 
And so, this results in a rapid processing greatly improves adsorption, washing, elution and regeneration steps and decreases the probability of inactivation of biomolecules. The process enable a fast processing at preserved or even increased resolution than standard chromatography. So, this is a membrane you can just see and this is one uh, of the pore you can see how different mechanisms are playing an important role. First is convection, this is your convection, okay. then film boundary layer, right these are film boundary layer separation, then these are pore diffusion. Okay, so, um, here the spot diffusion is happening, right. Let us discuss the general properties actually. So, generally distinguished from particle based chromatography or this you can say resin based chromatography by the fact that interaction between a solute and a matrix that is the ligand okay, takes place in the through pores of the membrane rather than in the dead end pores of the particle. You try to understand what is this meaning actually. So, let us see this is your uh, packed bed chromatography, this is a through pore. Okay, that means, the pore is open to both sides, right. So, whatever is coming this side is again getting out this side or in the reverse direction. But you see, uh, this is a dead end pore, this is a dead end pore, this is a dead end pore, there are so many dead end pores. The membranes do also have dead end pores, but here we are not talking about that type of membrane. Here you can say that a convection is happening okay, through the pores only and the dead end pores are not present. So, in that sense, the, your uh, bulk convection and film diffusion both these are predominant, there is no pore diffusion. So, this is the advantage if you compare of membrane chromatography, if you compare with uh, your traditional resin based chromatography. So, in the dead end pores, the mass transport occurs through diffusion and through the pores of the membrane by convection. So, the elimination of pore diffusion significantly reduce the mass transport resistance and fasten the process. So, or just increase the rate of the uh, process. The only transport resistance is due to the film diffusion from the core of the liquid to the membrane surface. So, the chromatographic interaction in the membrane are similar to those occur in ion exchange, hydrophobic and bio or pseudo affinity interaction. So, uh, let us understand the benefits of uh, membrane chromatography. So, uh, membrane chromatography is having very high binding efficiency due to direct access to the binding groups even at low flow rates. So, speed high flow rates enable the processing of large volumes, the flow rates are uh, 20 to 50 times faster than the conventional chromatographic solvents. Scalability and flexibility, a wide range of capsule sizes uh, accommodates various volumes and uh, capacities. Uh, ready to use, the capsule format eliminates the need for packing and unpacking. If used as part of a single use manufacturing process, there are no cleaning or cross contamination issues that is arises. So, lower cost of operation, this is one of the most important uh, aspect uh, in commercialization. So, membrane capsule offer lower operating and capital investment costs. Uh, than conventional columns that require packing. Reduced buffer consumption that means small device footprint requires significantly less buffer. So, these are uh, all uh, various benefits of the membrane chromatography. Now, let us see some of the geometries and processing formats or let us say how the different modules are available. So, membrane devices are based on three types of flow. So, dead end flow, cross flow and radial flow. Dead end flow devices such as modules with multiple stacked membrane disks are similar to traditional columns. So, this is uh, your dead end stacked disk, okay, because uh, just uh, uh, the different membranes are uh, packed or stacked together, okay, um, uh, similar to the traditional columns. So, cross flow membrane chromatography devices are particularly amenable to scale up based on an effective separation capacity comparable to that associated with the use of stacked devices. So, you can have cross flow a cascade, this is a cross flow cascade, then we will have hollow fiber systems, we will have spiral wound system, we have pleated sheet uh, system. So, in pleated sheets basically you can imagine that uh, I am just trying to draw, it, it will look something like this, if you see from the top view, ok. So, these are the membrane sheets. So, you can see this is the cross section how it looks like, right. So, the sheets of membranes are stitched together uh, and uh, a along a hollow uh, pipe which you can imagine through which air permeate will be collected, right. Uh, let us say a few applications, foremost and important application is of course, protein capture and intermediate purification. So, the principal uh, goal for protein capture is to selectively harvest the protein of interest by removing bulk impurities. It may happen that the protein of our interest is present with various impurities along with other smaller or bigger proteins also. 
Okay, so, you have to selectively separate it. So, intermediate purification strives to remove the remaining protein impurities. Usually, the feedstock of protein mixture is a cell lysate or cell free medium okay, uh, clarified with centrifugation or filtration. So, affinity membrane chromatography is common method for uh, protein capture. These are few examples uh, given in this tabular format for protein capture and purification applications. You can see the, uh, the first column uh, listed the membrane material and ligand, the second is the target solute, the third is the capacity, then we have recovery and purity and membrane geometry. So, let us see one. So, the affinity membranes. So, Cheetos and aluminum oxide composite. Okay. Uh, so, hemoglobin in hemolysate is the target molecule here, capacity is 11 to 13 milligrams per milliliter. Uh, 91 percent recovery flat sheet membranes. Similarly, if you see uh, a ion exchange membrane, okay. so let us say RC viva spin, so beta uh, lactoglobulin from where is the target molecule or uh, target solute you can say. 7.8 milligrams per milli, uh, milliliter for glycosylated CMP, separation uh, almost 87.6 percent pure, spin column is the geometry. So, in protein purification there is a polishing stage. So, once the target molecules are captured and purified, the remaining impurities such as endotoxins, nucleic acids and viruses are extensively cleared by polishing. The micro sized pores of the membrane used in membrane chromatography effectively clear large molecules such as nucleic acid and viruses with minimum fouling. Now, the process uh, is particularly used for production of therapeutic biologics based on its capacity for the removal of higher molecular aggregates. Large biomolecules purification as for example, plasmid DNA purification. Plasmid DNA or uh, known as pDNA represents the major target product for nucleic acid purification which is done by membrane chromatography. The interaction between the negatively charged phosphate groups on the DNA backbone and the positively charged ligands on the chromatographic media enhances the purification process. So, you can see how the separation so if you see the uh, ligands, let us say this is one ligand okay, which is bound to the membrane. Basically, it is positively charged and uh, the DNA molecules, uh, uh, let us say this is a DNA molecules, uh, the P, uh, phosphate side is negatively charged. So, this will come and uh, join with each other or uh, being, uh, they will get attached to each other by virtue of the charge based interaction. So, similarity in size and chemical properties between pDNA and other nucleic acid impurities as for example, RNA also makes it difficult for complete separation. So, in small scale processes, the difficulty can be avoided through the use of RNAs A. RNAs A is an enzyme uh, that selectively degrade the RNA contaminants because we are only interested in purifying the pDNA. So, plasmid purification using membrane chromatography few examples. So, if the membrane material is alumina composite, the ligand is diamine, target is uh, pDNA in E. coli lysate let us say, adsorption capacity is almost 2 microgram per centimeter square, recovery data is not given here in this case, membrane geometry is 40, 40 uh, flat sheets. So, if you talk about RC sato bind, uh, this is actually uh, the membrane material, the brand basically, the ligand is buzz. Uh, target is 6 pDNA in E. coli lysate, 32.5 milligrams per liter is the adsorption capacity, recovery is very good 73 percent, the membrane geometry is usually flat sheets. So, there are others also. I hope you understand that what are the different types of membrane materials, what are the capacity, how, what are the recovery, uh, what is the target solute. Okay. So, the next one is virus purification. So, purified viruses are used for the production of vaccines and novel applications in the realm of gene therapy. So, you need purified viruses that is why. So, existing bioprocesses are based in usually centrifugation or ultrafiltration, again a membrane based process and are labor intensive, time consuming and uh, expensive too. So, traditional resin chromatography has limitations such as uh, limited accessibility of ligands within resins and attachment of multiple ligands by a single macromolecule. So, membrane chromatography offers an attractive solution to these technical issues. So, uh, different uh, virus purification using membrane chromatography few examples are given here. Uh, again, if you see RC, the regenerated cellulose basically. So, the ligand is Q, target is recombinant uh, baculovirus, adsorption capacity is 2.28 into 10 power of 1015 ppu per meter cube. So, uh, greater than 100 percent recovery flat sheet geometry. So, you can just go through it later on to see what are the different types of other viruses that are being removed using uh, different ligands as well as membrane material. So, the next section 
uh, that we are going to discuss today is controlled drug delivery. As I told you in the beginning of the class, so controlled drug delivery is nothing very new. It has been in practice uh, since few years. However, due to its inherent advantages, there is a huge uh, interest of the uh, scientists, doctors on this particular technology and that how to improvise it and make it further uh, beneficial for the uh, human as well as other living organisms. So, drug delivery systems are pharmaceutical formulations or uh, devices that help in achieving targeted delivery and or controlled release of therapeutic agents in our body. An ideal controlled de drug delivery system delivers the drug at a predetermined rate locally or systematically for a specific period of time. Plus, uh, just have a look at this particular diagram. What this diagram is telling us, uh, so here the plasma drug concentration is being plotted with time, right? Three types of things are there. So, the drug plasma levels after single oral administration of a drug, okay, three different types of delivery was done. The first is IR, which is called immediate release. Okay. So, this is second is SR which is called sustained release, this is uh, your SR actually right and the third is controlled release this is CR. So, just see how uh, the profiles are you see when it is instantaneous or immediate release. So, you see that there is a huge peak here okay. immediately it, the entire drug has been administered inside the cell and there is a huge decrease in the uh, drug uh, concentration with respect to time sudden decrease, sudden increase, sudden decrease. Now, sustained slowly it is basically sustained release. You can see how this is sustained release here little better okay. then still it comes uh, with respect to times right. So, sudden increase then it is coming time it is better than the IR however, this is also not very good. Uh, look at CR the controlled release you can see how slowly the concentration is increasing and it is maintaining. Ah, reaching a saturation almost uh, after a certain time okay, and the concentration remains constant for a particular period of time. So, this is called control drug delivery and it is always better than the IR and SR form of delivery. So, uh, membranes are used to moderate the drug delivery rate to the body that is the job of membranes actually. Membrane can control the drug permeation from a reservoir and help in achieving a desired drug delivery rate. In few devices, the osmotic pressure produced by diffusion of water across a membrane can be used to power miniature pumps. Drugs can also be impregnated into the membrane material which then slowly dissolve or degraded in the body. Drug delivery in this case can be controlled by a combination of diffusion and biodegradation. Okay. This is very important. So, if you look back little to the history of the drug delivery in 1955 uh, Rose and Nelson described the first miniature osmotic pump uh, to deliver the drugs inside the human body. In 1960s Alja corporation gave controlled release of steroid for contraception uh, a decisive thrust. In 1964 Falkman and Long described the use of silicon rubber membranes for controlling the release of anesthetics and cardiovascular drugs. Then in 1974 first pharmaceutical product with a specification of total amount of drug with delivery rate was developed by Alja. Alja is a leading pharmaceutical company. Later on same company developed a varieties of uh, widely used products including multi-layer transdermal patches designed to deliver drug through the skin. So, the advantages of drug controlled drug delivery is that now it avoids the problem of overdosing and underdosing as associated with conventional periodic medication. The drug is provided in the uh, particular site of the affected organ then uh, rather than systematically as a tablet or an injection. The localized drug delivery results in fewer side effect as the concentration on the other sites are less, improve the therapeutic effects of conventional medication and avoid the related side effects. So, uh, there are few disadvantages also, but system must be physically removed after uh, it has done its uh, delivery from the implant sites. So, difficult to deliver high molecular weight compounds because uh, that dispersion takes long time and do not get properly dispersed also few, few will remain inside the uh, capsule. Increased cost per dosage unit and potential tax toxicity to the entire system body if the system do not work or it fails. Right. So, huge amount of work is still going on uh, for controlled drug delivery. We will see one or two such uh, very interesting works. So, it is a membrane diffusion control system. 
So, uh, in this system the drug is released from the device by permeation from the interior reservoir to the surrounding system. Just you see this uh, particular uh, thing where this is the membrane okay. and inside this membrane capsule your drug is being inserted or packed whatever you can say in that way. So, uh, the drug will release through the membrane something like this to the uh, tissue okay, or the surrounding uh, fluid. So, the rate of release depends on the rate of diffusion of drug through the membrane. So, it is a uh, here what is happening uh, the rate of diffusion of the drug uh, is uh, uh, the most important factor that is the driving force basically. Okay. Uh, so, the concentration there will be a concentration difference here and uh, compared to here, here it will be more. So, obviously, from higher to lower. Uh, an inert membrane is used to enclose the drug to be released when the concentration or thermodynamic activity of the material in equilibrium with the inner surface of the enclosing membrane is constant the driving force that is concentration gradient for diffusional release of drug is also constant. This defines the zero order release in which the inner reservoir contains a saturated solution of a material that provides a constant release rate for as long as constant solid is maintained inside the solution. The first order release occurs when the drug within the device is present uh, as a unsaturated solution whose concentration falls as it is released. So, the release rate declines exponentially in the first order release instantaneously it is uh, releasing basically. So, when a saturated solution drug and an excess solid drug is present in a device fixed law can be applied. So, for a slab or sandwiched geometry so j equals to minus dk dcs by dx. So, dmt by dt equals to a j by l which is equal to a d k c s by l again uh, substituting uh, j from here right. So, j is the membrane limiting flux m t is the mass of the drug released at any time t that is dmt by dt is the steady state drug release rate at time t a is the total surface area of the device c s is the saturation solubility of the drug. So, let us see one example of the membrane diffusion control system. So, one classic example is the Okusat uh, pilocarpine system which are some sorts of uh, you can see uh, here this is a small very small device okay, uh, transparent basically which is being implanted inside the eyes. So, the device consists of two membrane sandwich of ethylene vinyl acetate with a pilocarpine uh, or pilocarpine reservoir in the center. So, this is the reservoir center okay, this one and there are two membranes this is one membrane this is one membrane and this is of course, the annular ring which is holding this pilocarpine uh, reservoir. So, a retaining ring of ethylene vinyl acetate impregnated with titanium dioxide encloses the drug reservoir circumferentially for visibility and handling of the insert. The device is placed inside the eye where the drug gets released in a continuous uh, rate for 7 days. The pilocarpine is bound to alginic acid and is present as a free base partly in an ionized form and partly in a non ionized form. The device is sterile and contains no preservative. The drug release from a reservoir type of diffusion control system is provided by interaction between the polymeric membrane and the drug content in the reservoir and the surface area and thickness of the polymer layer. Another example is steroid releasing uh, intrauterine device which is called IUD. So, intrauterine contraceptive devices are appropriate contraceptive options for women who desire a very convenient long term contraceptive or who are considering sterilization. So, one example is the uh, levonogestrel releasing intrauterine system which is popularly known as LNG IUS. Mm, it is a T separate device you can see how it looks like composed of a cylinder containing 52 grams of LNG. So, this is the cylinder which contains 52 grams of uh, LNG covered by a rate controlling membrane which serves to regulate the rate of hormonal release right. Uh, another one is monolithic device. So, the drug is uniformly dispersed through the polymer drug diffusion through the polymer matrix is the rate limiting step. A release rates are determined by the choice of polymer and its consequent effect on the <laughs> diffusion and partition coefficient of the drug to be released. So, you can see here the drugs are actually very uniformly getting dispersed inside the polymer matrix at time equals to 0, at time equals to 3, okay, the drugs are diffusing out of the uh, matrix. 
So, the release profile depends on the loading of the dispersed agent, the nature of the components and the geometry of the device. Problems associated with reservoir systems such as thin spots, spin holes or other similar defects do not substantially alter the release rate on the monolithic device. Two types of monolithic devices are found, one is monolithic uh, solution, another is monolithic dispersion. In monolithic solution, the active agent is dissolved in the polymer uh, medium. So, examples are pesticides containing cat and dog collars to control ticks and fleas, often used when the active agent is a liquid. And monolithic dispersion is uh, something in which the solubility of the active agent in the polymer medium is more limited. A small portion of the active agent is dissolved and the remainder is present in dispersed form throughout the polymer. Let us understand the principle uh, of monolithic drug release. The starting point for release of the drug from this system is explained by Higuchi model. The model assumes that the solid drugs in the surface layer of the device dissolves in the polymer and diffuses from the device first. Once the surface layer is exhausted of, of drug, the next layer start to be depleted. Hence, the interface between the dispersed drug area and the dissolved drug area moves into the interior as a front. Uh, the results predicted from this model validates the actual release rate. So, you can see this is the schematic representation of a cross section through a polymer matrix initially containing dispersed solid drug. So, the interface between the region containing dispersed drug and the region containing only dissolved uh, drug has moved a distance x from the surface. Okay. So, according to the Higuchi model, we can write the mass of uh, drug that is released with at a time t is A into d k t c s 2 c naught minus c s to the power of half. So, when c naught greater than c s, so m t okay, m t equals to 2 d k t c s c naught to the power of half. The release rate at any time we can write d m t by d t. So, equals to a by 2 d k c 2 by t 2 c naught minus c s to the power of half or when uh, the c naught becomes greater than c s, we can write a by 2. So, into 2 2. So, basically 2 into d k c s c naught. So, this is completely like this. Okay, so, do not get confused with the equations. So, Higuchi model is based on a pseudo steady state approximation. A more correct expression was postulated by Paul and Max Padden, which is m t equals to a 2 d k t c s c naught minus k c s to the power of half. So, here the release rate is proportional to the square root of loading and the range of variation in release rate is narrower than would be the case if the agent were uh, merely dissolved rather than dispersed in the polymer. So, then another system biodegradable systems under controlled drug delivery. So, the membrane of a diffusion control device is mainly Im uh, remains implanted after the completion of the drug delivery. So, that is what uh, it is a dis greatest disadvantage because you need to uh, take the uh, take it out from the body. So, in medical field this is considered undesirable and a device that degrade during or subsequent to its delivery uh, uh, is desired. So, such device made up of polymers such as polylactic acid, polyglycolic acid and their copolymers have been developed. So, they, uh, they will dissolve once uh, the drug delivery is uh, uh, done. So, two types of uh, um, actually classification uh, of biodegradable system one is bulk erosion and another is surface erosion. So, in bulk erosion, the degradation, the degradation takes place throughout the sample. Water intake is faster than the polymer chain scission. So, polyester, polylactones, polyamino acids, etc., are the examples. And in surface erosion, simple erosion occurs from the surface. Nothing is getting inside basically. Polymer degradation is very faster than the water intake. So, uh, poly anhydrides poly uh, ortho esters. So, are few examples of surface erosion systems. Uh, these are few examples of biodegradable polymeric nanoparticles and their importance. You can uh, go through it later on. I will just tell that polylactic acid is the polymer, nano precipitation is the method of synthesis, uh, docetax cell is the cargo and improved uh, therapeutic improvement is improved cytotoxicity and apoptosis. So, like there are many you can just go through it later on, I am just skipping it. So, biodegradable system applications. So, the biodegradable polymeric biomaterials have improved the drug delivery applications and further refining applications in pharmaceutical and biomedical field. So, you can see the different types of applications, regenerative medicine, sustained and controlled drug delivery, vaccine delivery, gene delivery, 
transdermal delivery, uh, site specific delivery, ocular de uh, delivery and uh, anti-cancer drug delivery. So, recent breakthrough in control drug delivery system, sustained release drug delivery system, vaccine, nucleic acid, protein and anti-cancer drug delivery and tissue engineering, regenerative medicine have paid attention toward biomaterial which are biodegradable. Another such application uh, of biodegradable system in the gene delivery. Biopolymer has been utilized extensively for formulating genetic material into a nanoparticle either embedded or encapsulated within the polymeric uh, matrix. So, ionizable cationic polymers with PK values uh, between 5 and 7 are preferred in the polymeric vector uh, delivery uh, to avoid the strong condensate property of the permanent cation with DNA. So, molecular weight, molecular structure, composition of the polymer are, for, are few important factors for the polymeric gene delivery factor. So, this is how actually the gene delivery process works uh, using a polymeric nanoparticle. So, the next one is stimuli responsive drug release. So, stimuli responsive polymeric drug carriers typically utilize nano carriers, uh, micellar systems, nanoparticles, polymorphisms or dendrimers to release the drug at the tumor site by taking advantage of differences in the physiological environment between the cancerous and the healthy cell. There is a physiological uh, environment difference between the cancerous and he healthy cell. So, that is the basically the driving force. So, enhanced site specificity of drug carriers they can be achieved by conjugating with targeting mo moieties that allow delivery at a specific tumor site. So, you can see here uh, this particular uh, schematic digra uh, diagram. So, you can see the blue is actually the hydrophilic block, the red is the hydrophobic block and the blacks are the, the dots are the drugs which are embedded in the hydrophobic block here. Okay. Then uh, with stimulants, so that means pH, temperature, light, enzyme reduction, any of these are a combination of uh, this okay. uh, will uh, result in degrading the entire structure thereby releasing the drug okay, from the hydrophobic block. So, a targeted drug delivery allows for the delivery of encapsulated uh, drugs to the targeted site, reducing the risk of toxicity to normal cells and allowing for the accumulation of drugs in the sufficient concentrations to uh, eliminate tumor cells. Targeting moieties such as antibodies, proteins, uh, peptides, carbohydrates, etc., are typically attached to the polymer through uh, end group variation or conjugation along the polymer backbone. So, this is a graphical representation of passive uh, uh, versus active targeting, how uh, two different types of targeting methods or mechanism are being adopted, one is passive, another is uh, active. So, uh, another example is vaccine delivery. So, here nanoparticle based vaccine delivery systems enable the target delivery of the antigens to dendritic cells, activation of uh, antigen representing cells and control release of the antigens. You can see the biodegradable nanoparticle as vaccine adjuvants and delivery system here. So, biodegradable nanoparticles, okay, nanometer in size, vaccine is the antigen, okay. Uh, then uh, you can see how antigen representing uh, the cell. So, once they get attached, then induction of human response will happen. Okay. Uh, upon that, the antibody will be detached okay. and then uh, of course, there will be uh, infected uh, cells which can be taken out or being separated. So, biodegradable nanopolymers prepared from polylactic uh, co-glycoside uh, glycolide which is known as PLGA, polyamino acids, polysaccharides have been shown to be effective vaccine carriers for a number of antigens. Another example is osmotic system, these are very popular actually. So, in osmotic system, an osmotic pump is used to create the osmotic effect for drug delivery. What is happening here? The pump uses the osmotic pressure developed by the diffusion of water across a semi permeable membrane. Okay. So, os the pump uses the osmotic pressure developed by diffusion of water across a semi permeable membrane into a salt solution to push the solution of active agent. Uh, from the device. Osmotic effects often create problems in diffusion control system because inhibition of water swells the device or dilutes the drug. So, this is the cross section of Alget R osmotic pump which was uh, manufactured by this particular company 
else you can see this is the uh, drug solution living via delivery portal from here okay the flow modulator will be there here flexible impermeable reservoir wall uh, saturated uh, solution osmotic or you can say osmotic solution water entering the red controlling membrane basically here right and then osmosis will happen there are different types of osmotic pumps so the first one we will discuss is about rose nelson pump which is very common so it consists of three chamber one is drug chamber another is a salt chamber containing excess solid salt and a water chamber so you can see this is water chamber this is salt chamber containing excess salt and this is your drug chamber okay this is how a rose nelson pump looks like so the principle is that the osmotic pressure difference across the membrane moves water from the water chamber into the salt chamber right so when there is a osmotic pressure difference across the membrane here so this is your membrane okay then water will move from the salt chamber so to the water from the water chamber to the salt chamber now the increased volume of salt chamber due to water flow distends the latex diaphragm by which the drug and salt chamber is separated okay so this is here this is not a membrane this is a elastic diaphragm and salt chamber is uh, uh, separated and the drug is pumped out of the device here okay so a simplified version of the rose national pump developed by alja corporation is uh, in, in the early 1970 so is higuchi lipper pump okay so here the principle is the, the pump has no water pump and the device is activated uh, by water imbibed from the surrounding environment uh, the drug pump can be prepared and stored for weeks or months prior to use pump is activated once it is swallowed and implemented in the body application is delivery of antibiotics and growth uh, hormones to animals so this is the higuchi lipper osmotic pump design how it looks like okay you can just refer it later another one is higuchi thiu's pump uh, so it's another uh, variant of the rose nelson pump what are needed to activate the pump uh, that comes from the surrounding environment so uh, has no rigid ho housing and the membrane acts as a uh, um, outer casing of the pump. So, uh, the principle is that when the device is placed in an aqueous environment, the release of the drug follows a time course set by the salt used in the salt chamber and the permeability of the outer membrane casing. So, you can see how that uh, Higuchi Thuwes osmotic pump looks like. So, this is the rigid semi permeable membrane here. Okay, this is osmotic agent layer, this black one. Then this is the flexible impermeable reservoir where here or getting deposited here and then the delivery port here. So, whatever you will be delivered, you will receive it here. So, another one is uh, Thuwes pump. So, it is enable more controlled drug release. So, uh, you see how it is happening. So, this is the elementary osmotic pressure. So, this is the semi permeable membrane water is getting inside. Okay. Uh, so, the core containing this is here there is a drug. Uh, and then we get saturated drug solution here. So, the, the device is made by compressing a drug having a suitable osmotic pressure to a tablet. The a, a semi permeable membrane is coated on the tablet and a small hole is drilled through the membrane coating. Uh, when the tablet is placed in an aqueous environment, the osmotic pressure of the soluble uh, drug inside the draws uh, water through the um, inside draws water through the semi permeable coating inside the device. So, as the membrane does not expand the water intake increase the volume and the hydrostatic pressure inside the tablet. So, this pressure is uh, relieved by the flow of saturated drug uh, solution and out of the device through the orifice. So, the next one is uh, intragastric osmotically controlled drug delivery system. So, this device is made up of two compartments comp components. So, the first one is drug reservoir component, another one is the osmotically active compartment. So, a drug reservoir compartment is enclosed by a pressure responsive collapsible bag impermeable to vapor and liquid and has a drug delivery office. Okay. So, you can see this is the drug reservoir the yellow one. So, osmotically active compartment contains an osmotically active salt and is enclosed within the semi permeable housing. The osmotically active salt in the osmotically active compartment is dissolved by water in the GI fluid that is uh, absorbed through the semi permeable membrane. This creates an osmotic pressure which acts on the collapsible bag, forces the drug reservoir compartment or to reduce its volume and activate the drug release of the drug solution formulation through the delivery uh, orifice. So, you can have a close look uh, again. So, this is your drug reservoir 
so drug delivery orifice is located here so osmotically this is the osmotically active component the pink one this is the capsule this is the collapsible bag here okay so these are the various parts of this intragastric osmotically controlled drug delivery system which is gaining a lot of interest nowadays for its uh, uh, efficiency so we come to the conclusion of this lecture as well as uh, um, this course as, as i told you in the beginning that today is the last lecture of this uh, membrane technology course uh, you can refer these books uh, today many material were taken from richard becker and few references so uh, before i uh, sign up the course i would like to uh, thank you and i hope that uh, uh, you have uh, learned something uh, during this entire course and uh, still you have any difficulty you can always ask me and you can always write to me at kmahanti at iitg.se.in and i am assuring you that i'll definitely get back to your mail uh, with my reply so thank you very much and I wish all of you a, a bright career and future ahead. So thank you very much. Um.